now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. Happy New Year. It's 2024, the second day of January, and we're thrilled to usher it in with you here on O'Connor and Company, the only place you need to start your day. It's Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. How's life in Alexandria these days, Julie? It's good. It's good. Yeah, sure. Sure it is. <laughs> okay. Joining us right now, Denise Rooker Krep. I ask because, as we just mentioned, the crime problem in D.C. is not isolated to the borders of the District of Columbia. The ripple effect is is uh, uh, is is palpable in Montgomery County, in Prince George's County, in Alexandria, Arlington, Fairfax, uh, and it continues to expand. And there is no serious leadership, Denise. There's no serious leadership in the District of Columbia in tackling the crime problem, let alone even facing up to the fact that there is a crime problem. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. You're, you're talking about the crime, like the 959 carjackings last year, the 274 homicides, and gee, we almost got to 7,000 car stolen. Is, is, is that the minor crime problem you're referring to? Yeah, that the, the one that District Chairman Phil Mendelson denied was even happening last spring. Yeah, yeah, he, he denied it. And you know what he did at the end of December? He nominated a convicted murderer to be Ugh. his representative on the D.C. Sentencing Commission. What do you think about that one? Uh, it's Ugh. Well, I guess that makes sense because it's offset by all of the crime victims represented on the... Oh, wait a minute. No, there are no crime victims represented. Just a yes, murderer. Zero. Just, yeah. just a murderer. So, you know... Uh, and, you know, we had a murder yesterday at 118, so there's a mother today planning a funeral for a child oh. who didn't even see the sunlight on New Year's Day. But we should be relying on a convicted murderer to give um, to give his thoughts to the D.C. Sentencing Commission. It, we live in a warped world. What? We do, but, you know, there are plenty of people who are listening right now thinking, you're right, it is a warped world, but it's a warped world of their own making, uh, talking about yeah, the citizens exactly. of District of Columbia. It's like, this is what you vote for. It's not like it's not like it's a surprise at this point. These are the people who you elect to constantly represent you, and mm -hmm. this is exactly the fruits of those of, of, of your politics. How do you respond to that? Well, let's uh, remember that I'm a Democrat, so with that in mind, I encourage people to recall my fellow Democrats who are doing this. I, I know that there are efforts afoot to recall Charles Allen. I completely support it. Yeah. I know there are efforts to recall other members, completely support it. And it's time to, you know, for the folks who are on the ballot this year, get them out. Yeah. We, we need leaders who hold criminals accountable. One of the problems, though, is so few Democrats sound like you, call a spade a spade, talk about the crime, talk about mm -hmm. actual solutions, real solutions. I mean, I sometimes feel like you kick one out and you get another one that ends up doing the same thing. What is the bench like? I mean, we know Republicans don't win in the district, but are there some good emerging candidates that you feel good about and would support? I'll be honest with you. Several folks came to me in, in Ward 7 and said, hey, Denise, we'd like your support. And the first thing I said to them was, great. How do you feel about crime? <laughs> I said, well, well, we'll get back to you. And I said, well, when you get back to me and you tell me that murderers belong in jail, then you get my support. But, the, but that's the same question we all should be asking. I, why are we voting for individuals who think that carjackers sh shouldn't go to jail? Why are we voting for individuals who think that murderers should get out early? And rapists, too, by the way. Right. We should all be asking the same questions. They have bought into this uh, incredibly insidious and destructive and divisive notion that the reason for crime, even the most violent crime, the, the murders and the rapes, the reason is systemic racism. And, and that is such an overriding philosophical, almost fanatical religious belief that you are willing to excuse murderers and rapists because, well, you know, what do you expect? Racism. Look, I, I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm simply going to say is if you murder somebody, you belong in jail. If you rape somebody, you belong in jail. If you commit armed carjacking, you belong in jail. That's a very simple statement. And that's what we all should be saying. Murders do not belong on the streets. Murders should not be advising well, the D.C. Council. I mean, I, I appreciate you not wanting to talk about it, but 
I don't know how we avoid it since since the all of their notions with regard to sentencing, with regard to cashless bail, with regard to uh, lessening the the punishments mm-hmm. for violent crime. It's it's they are talking about they rationalize their decisions that allow criminals on the streets because of racism. They say it's just, our judicial system is systemically racist and uh, the people who are of color are uh, affected most by these decisions that have made in the past, so we're going to right those wrongs. That's what we're living under, Denise. You can't deny it. What I simply know is that I've got carjackings on my block. I've got murders occurring half a block from my house, and I'm not the only one that's saying this in D.C., So what we should be focusing on is getting individuals who commit rape, murder, armed carjacking, assault, car theft in jail. And and, and that's going to be my focus in 2024. And so every time the D.C. Council does something silly, like nominate a murderer to the D.C. Sentencing Commission, I will write uh, my testimony and say, don't do this. You know, if if you commit murder, I'll do a community impact statement saying he, he or she belongs in jail. Denise, we're spending a lot of time talking about elected officials here, but I know you mm-hmm. also talk to, you know, people who work in the city and and I mean for the city, the police officers mm-hmm. in particular, and also, you know, just the people who sort of keep the, the trains running. What is the morale like in the city among city workers? And are they, do they also see this disconnect between elected officials and acting like the reality isn't the reality that that crime isn't a problem that what is you know i'm just kind of curious about the average person who works for the city are they shaking their heads and going what what is going on yeah here? yeah it, it, especially the police officers i mean you, you've got a bunch of dc council members that are throwing them under the bus and saying how horrible they are and i'm looking at the, the situation like, are you kidding me the, the, the men and women in the dc police are the reason we don't have more crime but the dc council doesn't support them Mm. you know it's a horrible situation so another nice thing to have in 2024 would be the dc council that supports the dc police yeah that would be nice uh we're speaking with uh, denise rooker krep she's a former uh, dc advisory neighborhood commissioner and uh, an outspoken critic of the current political climate that has created this crime problem in dc and it, it is this is this is happening because politicians are allowing it to happen what role does congress have here dc is in a unique situation where there is congressional oversight there is a constitutional mm-hmm. role and yeah. a legitimate case to be made that the citizens of this country deserve a safe capital city where they can come and petition their government do you do you welcome oversight here since we aren't oh, getting I that do. oversight internally <laughs> Yep, and, and I'm the elected official who sought help from Congress last year. Yeah, I, I wrote to Congress, both the House and the Senate, and said, please overturn that really crazy, nutty law that they tried to pass last year. And if we need the same this year, then we need it. I mean, we should all live in a safe city. And if we have a D.C. council that, again, is relying on murderers for advice, then we need outside help to say, you know, maybe it's time we start talking to the victims' families instead of those that are killing people. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a that's a quaint notion. <laughs> we yes, always welcome is. we welcome your voice here and your advocacy, and uh, hopefully that advocacy and activism will uh, turn into some real results here. We need you to continue to keep these conversations going, and I appreciate you uh, keeping them going here on our program. Happy New Year to you, and thank, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It is eight fifteen WMAL traffic and weather every ten minutes first on the fives with Jamie Whitten. 